We have a long day's journey awaiting us. 2010 AMC 12A problem 21. And it's a polynomial and I see a very crazy equation along with a line. Let's read it. The graph of y equals to x to the 6 minus 10 times x to the 5th plus 29x to the 4th minus 4x cubed plus ax squared. I don't see any, I don't see any the terms x and constant. So maybe, so maybe we can use that somehow. Lies above the line. Hey, but they are giving, uh, giving the x and the constant with this equation, which is interesting. So we know this equation is lying above the line y equals to bx plus c, except at three values of x. So what's happening at the values? The graph and the line intersect at these values of x. Okay, what is the largest of these values? Well, that's, that's interesting. So we have, we have a line, we have a line that's going something like this, and we have, a, we have our function, and our function hits the line at three places. So one, two, three. So our function is doing something like this, boop, boop, and it's hitting it again going back up and we know the end behavior is going to be toward infinity for both negative and positive infinity because the leading coefficient is one. So we know our graph is going to open up like this, not, not something like, not something like this. So that's not going to happen. Okay. So we know our graph looks resembles this, this form. So what can we do? Well, when they intersect, that's telling you this equation of the graph of our polynomial is equal to the equal to this equation, the equation of the line. So let's set them equal to each other just for the sake of it. So you have x to the sixth minus ten x to the fifth plus twenty nine x to the fourth minus four minus four x cubed plus a x squared is equal to b x plus c. And let's move this to the other side. So we have equals to zero on one side. So minus bx minus c is equal to zero. Hmm. Now what do we do? Now what do we do? Hmm. Well, we know this equation has six complex roots, including the repeated ones. But at these points, the, our polynomial is not crossing the line. It's bouncing back up. Aha, bouncing. And bouncing reminds us of multiplicity 2. Multiplicity 2. And multiplicity 2 is is same thing as bouncing at the point. So we know this equation can be written in the form x minus some root squared times x minus some another root squared plus x minus another root uh, times, my bad, times x minus the third root squared is equal to zero. And you may say, why? Well, to begin with, you know this equation has six roots because it's, it's a sextic function. The, 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 the leading, the very first term, uh, not the very first term, the largest exponent is six. So you know there has to be six roots, r1, r2, r3, r4, r5, and r6. But you know at these critical points, how we are bouncing, we're not crossing it. And if you think about it, consider equation y equals to x, and that y equals to x crosses the x-axis, and y equals to x squared bounces at the x-axis. And this one has multiplicity 1 because the root, the factor is repeated once, and for this one, the factor is repeated twice, so it has multiplicity 2. And you can immediately see that multiplicity 2 means that it's going to bounce, and I'm not going to make a proof. The one way to prove it is using calculus, but I'm not going to do it in this video. But anyways, we know, we know the graph is bouncing, so we know the multiplicity has to be has to be at least two it's not going to be one because multiplicity one is going to signify crossing and since you have three of them and two times three is six you immediately know that this equation can be written as a multi a multiple of three factors with multiplicity two each so you have this equation and we we know the first coefficient, the second coefficient, and third coefficient, starting with x to the fifth. So why don't we apply Vieta's formulas, Vieta's formulas to this equation? And Vieta's formula is allowing you to relate some manipulation of the roots, the symmetric sums of the roots, with the coefficients of the polynomial. 
And how we do that, let's focus on the first one, minus 10. And let me, let me remind us, our roots are R1, R1, there's two R1s, R2, R2, and R3, R3, two of each. So we know the sum of the root, often written as S sub 1, the sum of the roots is 2 times R sub 1, plus 2 times R sub 2, plus 2 times R sub 3. And Vieta's formula tells us the, this first symmetric sum, the sum of the roots, is equal to negative of the coefficient of the term after x to the 6, after the first, the biggest term. So this is going to be equal to negative of the coefficient of x to the 5th, or negative 10. And that's equal to 10. If you do not know Vieta's formula, I highly recommend you look it up, you Google it, or you look up a video to study it. I don't have a video about Vieta's formula yet, but I may make one in the future. Anyways, let's simplify this as R1 plus R2 plus R3 is equal to 5. So we know the first symmetric sum. Can we find second symmetric sum? And we can. Second symmetric sum is when you're multiplying two of the roots and adding all of the possible, all of the possible per permutations together. So we can have R1 times R1 r1 squared, r2 times r2, r2 squared, r3 times r3, r3 squared, and you can also have r1 times r2, and how many ways is it possible? What's the coefficient? Well, there's two ways to choose r1, two ways to choose r2, so there's going to be 2 times 2 or 4, r sub 1, r sub 2, and similarly, 4 times r sub 1, r sub 3, 4 times r sub 2, r sub 3, and you know this is equal to positive, not negative, You're, the signs switch back and forth, positive of the coefficient of x to the fourth, the, of the following term, so we know that's equal to 29. Okay? Well, if you're if you're a bit experienced in manipulating the squares of expressions like r1, r2, r3, you may realize that this expression is very, very similar to r1 plus r2 plus r3 squared. And you know this is 5 squared because r1, r2, r3, adding them together gets you 5, so that's 25. But when you, when you multiply this out, you get an expression very similar to this one. You get r1 squared plus r2 squared plus r3 squared, and you can get r1, r2 in two ways by, by picking r1 from the first factor or the second factor. So r1, r2 times 2, 2 times r2, r3 plus 2 times r1, r3, and by subtracting these two, so by subtracting this equation and this equation, so by doing i minus 2, all of the r1, r2, r3 squared cancel out. So this, all of these, they can, these cancel out, these cancel out, and these cancel out. So we are left with, we are left with 29 minus 5, which is 4, and you're doing this thing minus this thing, which gets you 2 times r1, r2 plus r2, r3 plus r1, r3, and dividing by 2 gets us the second symmetric sum, r1, r2 plus r2, r3 plus r1, r3 is equal to 2. So we are getting somewhere. Now what do we do? Now let's apply Vieta's formula to the cubic term, the minus 4. So let's do that. So we know we can get r1 squared times r2, and now I'm finding third symmetric sum. So you're choosing three of them, multiplying them up, and you're adding all of the possible permutations. And r1 squared times r2, you can choose by picking, there's two ways to pick R2, and there's only one way to pick two R1s by just picking them like this, but there's two ways to pick R2, so the coefficient is going to be 2. So you have two of these, and similar thing applies to 2 R1 squared R3, so let me just, let me just write it using distributive property, or factoring, I guess you could say, and let me just write it like this. R1 squared times r2 plus r3 so i'm i'm just i'm just condensing the information plus and similarly 2r2 squared r1 plus r3 plus 2r3 squared r2 plus r1 plus r2 i'm sorry r1 plus r2 and you can also get plus r1 r2 r3 and how many ways can you get r1 r2 r3 well there's two ways of picking r1 two ways of picking r2 two ways of picking one r3 so there's eight of them two times two times two so not six eight and you know this is equal to negative of the coefficient of the cubic term or four so let's go this way 
let's go this way and we can divide by 2 and simplify this a bit we know r1 squared times r2 plus r3 plus r2 squared times r1 plus r3 plus r3 squared times r1 plus r2 plus 4 times r1 r2 r3 is equal to 2 i'm just dividing by 2 uh, the previous expression and what can we do now this took me some time to realize and I was I was messing around with some equations and I, the equation I got that that looks similar to this equation is r1 plus r2 plus r3 times times r1 times r2 plus r3 plus r2 times r1 plus r3 plus r3 times r1 plus r2 and you may say why did I why did I how did I come up with this equation and wh why is it useful well to start with we know the value of r1 r2 r3 this is s sub 1 and we we already figured out s sub 1 and what was s sub 1 our s sub 1 our s sub 1 was 5 our s sub 2 was 2 let me actually write that down our s sub our s sub 1 our s sub 1 was 5 s sub 2 was 2 Okay, and we know that's our s sub 1, so you know the value of this. And for this expression, if you multiply it out, you get 2r1r2 2 2 plus 2r2r3 2 plus 2r1r3, 2 and this is 2 times s sub 2. And we, you know the value of s sub 2, so you know the value of both of these expressions. So we know the value of this entire thing, and let's actually figure that out. s sub 1 times 2 times s sub 2. So we know this entire expression is equal to 20. And when you multiply out this expression, you get something very similar to this. You get r1 squared, r1 squared times r2 plus r3, plus multiplying it like this, r2 squared times r1 plus r3, plus r3 squared times r1 plus r2. And since you're seeing this equation several times and we're just repeatedly writing down the same information, let's just save space and call this part A. So let's just call this, let's just call this A. So we have A plus, obviously there's more to expand in the sum. We can multiply r1 to r2 and this the expression with r3. So let's try multiply them out, see what we get. You have r1, r2 times r1 plus r3 plus r1, r3 times r1 plus r2. And let's, and let's try to factor r1 out for the sake of it. <laughs> Let me hear, I could have just factored it out to begin with, but I'm just trying to look at this expression from various point of view. And what is the part inside? The part inside is r1 times r1, r2 plus r2, r3 plus r1, r3, plus r2, r3, where we have two r2, r3s, and we have r1, r2, and r1, r3. So you can write this as r1 times the second symmetric sum, and you have one extra r2, r3. And in similar ways, so let me let me jot it down, times plus r1 times s sub 2 plus r2, r3. Similarly, you can get r2 times s sub 2 plus, in, since you want to have r1, r2, and r3, in this case, you're going to get r1 times r3, plus r3 times s sub 2 plus r2, r1 times r2. Okay, so you have this crazy expression going on. And can we, can we simplify this expression? And the answer is yes. So we have our a plus, let's multiply this out. You have r1 times s2, r2 times s2, r3 times s2. That's s2 times r1, r2, and r3. And this is s sub 1. And we also have r1, r2, r3, r1, r2, r3, r1, r2, r3. So there's 3, r1, r2, r3. And you knew this expression, you knew this expression was equal to 2. No, no, no. You know, you knew this expression was equal to 20, my bad. So we know this expression is 20. And you know s sub 2, s sub 2 is 2 and s sub 1 is 5. So let's... So s sub 2 is 2, s sub 1 is 5. So we have a plus 10, and let's just move that over to the other side, is equal to 10. Because you have plus 10, you're subtracting 10, getting us 10. So you have a plus 3r1, r2, r3 is 10. So let me write that down. So you know a plus 3r1, r2, r3 is 10, right? I believe so. And we also know, we also know, uh, to begin with, 
that we know this expression a plus 4 r1 r2 r3 is 2 and using this we can figure out r1 r2 r3 subtracting just both of them immediately gets us r1 r2 r3 is negative 8 and that's the third symmetric sum so we know first symmetric sum of 5 second symmetric sum of 2 third symmetric sum of negative 8 and you know the r1 and r2 and r3 are the roots we're talking about and you know you can formulate a cubic using these by reverse application of vietas so you have you have x cubed minus 5x squared plus 2x minus 8 is equal to 0 plus 8 is equal to 0 you want to negate this one and this one and you know r1 and r2 and r3 are zeros of this expression so now all we have to do is somehow factor this expression find r1 r2 r3 and the biggest one out of r1 r2 r3 is going to be the solution so let's try factoring this why don't we start by trying uh negative one and zero because ne one one doesn't work out obviously you have one minus five plus two plus eight which is not zero but negative one seems reasonable let's try it out one you get negative six eight zero perfect using synthetic division you have this expression factoring as x minus one times x squared minus six x plus eight also known as x minus 1 times you can factor this as x minus 4 times x minus 2 right x minus 1 times x minus 4 times x no no, no x plus 1 because minus 1 is the word so you want to make this x plus 1 so we have our r1 r2 r3 r1 r2 r3 or negative 1 4 and 2 by solving this equation is equal to 0 and which one is the largest well 4 is the largest so 4 is the answer to this question so we have, who after all this work, our answer, the biggest, the largest of these values, these zeros of the cubic we formulated is 4. So the answer is A.